We will be talking about the 2021-2022 to Cargo Connect Season Robot Game Field Kit with some building tips if your team has not started building it yet, along with some build aspects to check for on every mission model to prevent the team from running into issues with incorrectly built mission models. In order to program your robot to be successful, your team needs to start with an error-free robot game field, and this video can help you achieve that. Hi, we're the Remote Makers. We are first Tech Challenge team from Pearland, Texas, and an alumni first LEGO League Challenge team. We won the first place Regional Champions Award three years in a row. We won a Runner-Up Champions Award at the FLO Share and Learn Virtual Open Invitational. We also advanced to the Razorback Invitational, the World Festival, and the Greece Virtual Open International. We were also selected to be a Global Innovation Semi-Finalist last year. Building your field kit is a great team activity. Make sure to include everyone. Besides bonding as a team, you will learn LEGO Technic building skills from the experts at LEGO headquarters themselves. By following their instructions, your team will learn how certain pieces can be used and ways to build effective structures. There are lots of different strategies for building models. Some teams will build the models over the course of multiple meetings. There are some suggestions of how to do this in the engineering notebook and team meeting guide. Some teams will decide to build all the models in one longer meeting session. Also, some teams will divide up the bags for independent building outside of meetings. It does not matter how your team decides to construct the field kit as long as the models are built correctly and ready to go when you start to build and program your robot. The field kit instructions are easy to find. You can either scan the QR code on the field mat or visit the first LEGO League Season Resources page. The field kit will contain bags that are labeled with numbers 1 to 17. There will also be several shared unlabeled bags that will hold mostly larger beams. When individual groups of students are building, it is very important that they only build one set of bag groupings at a time to avoid confusion and make it easier to check that the models are built correctly. Most bag groupings will ask you to gather specific separate pieces from the unlabeled shared bags. For example, when building bag grouping number 15, you should take six of the orange 13 long beams from one of the unlabeled shared bags. Also, make sure that you collect all of the bags in one bag grouping before building. For instance, when building bag grouping 15, you need to find all of the bags labeled 15 in order to have all the pieces you need to construct the model. We have a few general building tips. Again, one build team should only have one bag grouping open at a time. Try to keep all the pieces contained in bowls, plates, or trays. It will make it much easier to keep track of the pieces so you don't lose them. Before starting to build each step, collect all the pieces listed in the blue rectangle in the top left corner. Make sure that you use all the pieces in each step before moving on. This can help minimize building mistakes caused by leaving out pieces. In every LEGO set, it is very important that you build exactly how it demonstrates in the instructions. The length of axles and beams matters a lot. Changing length can make a mission work in a completely different way. Make sure to check that the length of your axle or beam matches up with the length of the axle or beam used in the instructions before placing your piece on the model. Different colors could change the scoring of a model. Make sure the colors on your model match those in the instructions. Even if the colors do not directly change the way the model scores, different colors can make it challenging to determine if the model is built correctly in other respects. Make sure to count the holes or studs between different connectors. Their placing may affect scoring. After you are done building, check the work of your teammates. Even experts make mistakes. Some leftover pieces are expected. All of bag grouping 16 is for your team to build your unique innovation project model. There are no instructions, so use your creativity. Bag Grouping 17 will have coach pins and season tiles that are not for use in the robot game. Your team can use these however you please. Bag Grouping 3 will also include a duplicate set of container contents that your team can use if the others get lost. In every bag grouping, there will also be assorted connectors left over. If you have any pieces bigger than these left over, it is most likely that they were left out of the model and can be a hint that the model was built wrong. Double check the models one more time. In the following notes, we will share our observations on how build and placing relate to the mission models. Read the Robot Game Rulebook in detail for point scoring requirements. This year, the color yellow indicates proposed areas for your robot to interact and activate mission models. For Mission Zero, there is no field kit build involved. 
Mission Zero gives bonus points if your robot and all of its equipment can fit into the small inspection area, including a 12-inch height limit. The boundaries of the small inspection area are drawn by the west and south walls, and a line that would extend from the launch area. Remember to read Rule 9 about robot inspection for more information on this process, and how your robot and all of its equipment must fit in either the small or the large inspection area before each match. Fitting in the small inspection area just awards some extra points. Mission 1 involves a build that your team designs and creates to symbolically represent their innovation projects this season. Back 16 in the Field Kit offers many LEGO pieces for this purpose that your team can use. Your team is supposed to build your model ahead of the tournament and bring it with you to your matches. If you have enough pieces, we recommend building a duplicate model to leave in your team's pit. That way, you will have a backup for later matches in case your main model gets lost or left behind during the busyness of competition. Your designed model needs to be made of at least two white LEGO pieces and measure at least four LEGO studs in some direction. Your team can get points for delivering your Innovation Project LEGO model from home to the Cargo Connect logo near the center of the mat. Mission 2 is called Unused Capacity. There is a hollow, hinged, blue container in separate Technic beams that serve as container contents. One thing to be careful of is that LEGO was nice enough to give all teams an extra set of container contents beams in case some get lost. Be careful to put those away in a safe place, and remember to only practice with one set, which includes two orange beams, three green L beams, and one turquoise three long beam. These container contents will start in home at the beginning of the match, and the blue hinged box will start with its lid closed and positioned on the west side of the mat. Please note that this blue container is not dual locked to the mat. Teams can get points for a partially full container or a completely full container, as long as the container's lid is completely closed. In Mission 3's cargo plane, some building notes to be careful of include the fact that friction connectors make up the hinge joint for the cargo plane door. This will result in your team experiencing some resistance for the cargo door opening and closing. This is to be expected. If you use this model a lot, these friction connectors may wear out over time. If this happens, your team may want to consider replacing the connectors to better simulate what they may expect at competition. Another build note is that a seven long yellow axle sticks out from the cargo plane door. Make sure that you use the correct length axle and that it is attached to the model on its south facing side. For this mission, teams get points for the cargo door resting completely down and touching its black frame. Additional points can be earned if the container from the inside of the plane is completely separate from the plane at the end of the match. The transportation journey for Mission 4 involves four separate builds, including two identical activator base supports, an airplane, and a truck model. The two activator bases will be dual locked in position on two north areas of the mat. The yellow activation triangle on these models will be set in its most upright position, and the airplane and the truck will be preloaded into these activator bases. The airplane sits in the activator on the west side. The truck sits in the activator on the east side. Teams can score points for the truck and or the airplane reaching their destinations, which involves being past the blue end line on the mat. We have a special build note about the activator support bases. The top of the yellow activator has different connector types on each side. A gray frictionless connector should be on the side shown in the foreground, and a black friction connector in the rear position. It is necessary to make sure your team uses the right connectors here in order for your model to have the correct amount of resistance. See instructions for this model on page 23 of the bag 13 to see more clearly the steps involving these connectors. As we mentioned previously, using friction connectors in a part that you move often does result in the friction connector wearing out over time. If yours becomes too worn, you may need to replace it during the season. For Mission 5, the switch engine should be able to rotate freely from the gray diesel side to the blue electric side when the model has dual lock connected, which raises it slightly on the mat. Verify that your yellow angled beam points down to the left when the gray engine side is facing up. Also, verify that the same yellow angled beam will point up to the right when the blue engine is facing up. This model will be dual locked into its position on the north side of the mat and starts the match with the gray diesel side facing up and the yellow beam all the way down and pointed towards the north. Teams can score points by turning the engine from gray diesel to blue electric so that the yellow bar rests all the way down and points toward the south. On Mission 6's accident avoidance structure, 
All the moving points on the model should have gray frictionless connectors, allowing free movement with little resistance. This model will be dual locked into position on the north mat area, with the yellow panel facing eastward. The model starts the match with the back black panel and the yellow panel both resting upright. Teams can earn points if their robot parks on the blue line next to the model at the end of the match, with no points if the black panel is notched down. Extra points can be earned if the yellow panel is tipped over. The mission models that are part of Mission 7 Unload Cargo Ship are some of the most difficult builds this year. Your team will want to check the positioning of the connectors and beams carefully. The cargo ship is to be dual locked to the mat, along with the gray rail portion of the crane with container. The crane itself should roll smoothly and easily within the confines of the gray track. At the start of each match, the crane will be positioned all the way westward in its track, with a dark gray pulley wheel resting on the slanted portion of the dark angled beam of the track. Teams will get points for the container no longer touching the cargo ship's east deck, with more points awarded for the container being completely east of the east deck. Again, check the colors of the connectors carefully for this model, along with counting to verify the correct hole position for each connector. For instance, looking at our photo of the crane model along the blue beam of the crane, there is a three long blue connector at the end, followed by a one and a half tan connector holding the container. Then, there are four empty holes, followed by a gray connector attached to the gray support responsible for raising and lowering the crane. Finally, after five empty holes, at the end there is a three long frictionless tan connector, allowing the crane arm to pivot. All of these connector types and positions are important for your model to work correctly. Also, don't forget the gray frictionless connectors at the bottom of the gray crane support, where it attaches to the black beam with the gray pulley wheel. Again, these are important to your model. Finally, the cargo ship east deck that you will be dealing with for this mission should be sturdy with no rocking motion of the east deck. Friction black connectors attach the platforms. Mission 8 Airdrop is a more complicated build, so make sure to carefully recheck your build by looking for the beam and axle lengths, correct connector types, friction versus non-friction, and the correct placement of connectors by counting the number of holes. This model is dual locked in the northeast corner of the mat, with the helicopter overhanging the north wall into the home section of the other board. This model starts with the food package loaded on the helicopter axle and the yellow lever positioned all the way westward. You can earn points by pushing the yellow lever to drop the food package. You will earn extra points if both teams drop their food packages. You can also earn more points by placing the opposing team's package in the Cargo Connect circle. Mission 8, Train Tracks, is a complicated build, so there are many things to check. Verify that the frictionless gray or tan connectors are used on the track and latch, so that they can rotate freely on the hinge joints. The center track section has one two-long gray connector on the north side, and one three-long tan connector on the south side. The red latch has a two-long tan connector. Verify that the longer part of the red latch faces northward. If the train car wheels cannot freely turn, they may be compressed too tightly on their axles. Try to pull the wheels out slightly on the axle so the train's wheels can easily spin. Because of its length, the train tracks may need to be taken apart for storage, so make sure to double-check the instructions when rebuilding. The train tracks will be dual locked in position along the east side of the mat. The center section of the track that must be repaired starts the mat straight up. The train car starts all the way northward on the tracks. You can receive points for the track being lowered or repaired. You can receive extra points if the train is latched at the end of the tracks. Additional points may be earned at the train for Mission 15 Load Cargo. The sorting center build for Mission 10 is fairly straightforward. It will be dual locked into position on the southeast section of the mat, with its sorting openings facing northward. Teams will get points for removing some of the sorting containers and leaving only the light orange container in the sorting area. Teams may choose to use the cargo containers to complete other missions if they retrieve them. Pay attention to page 10 of the Robot Game Rulebook about the type of random setup of the cargo containers at the beginning of the match. There are very specific rules about the placement of these containers. Using these rules, there are six potential configurations that your field setup person or referee can choose to use at the beginning of the match. Teams should be prepared for whatever configuration is chosen. The home delivery door and doorstep for Mission 11 is a fairly simple build. Check that you included the white beam frame around the door. Also verify that the doorstep part of your model is deep enough, including two 15 long white beams in both the front and the back. 
Connect it across all three white plates. Finally, make sure that the yellow package is three plates tall. This door and doorstep model will be locked in its position in the southeast section of the mat, with the door facing westward. The yellow package itself will start each match in home. Teams will get points for delivering the package from home to the doorstep and resting on it partly or completely. The large delivery mission involves a long white turbine blade, its blue holder, and a chicken statue model. The white turbine blade is not a complicated build, but it can be easy to make a mistake in its repetitive build. Verify that the overall length of your blade is correct, along with the presence of the 15 long white beams added for strength to both the bottom and the front of the turbine blade. And finally, make sure that the hollow parts of the white plates all face backwards, opposite of the 15 long white additional support beams. If these building aspects are incorrect, it may make a difference in how your robot carries the blade. The chicken statue model is a relatively easy build, but the chicken can rotate on its base. In field setup, make sure that the beak points toward one of the corners of the square base, so that you can practice maneuvering around the statue correctly. In setting up your mission models, the blue holder for the turbine blade will be dual locked into position on the south side of the mat, with the model slanting up towards the south wall. The chicken statue itself rests in its circle with no dual lock. Be careful to line up the chicken's position using the black outlines on the mat for its tail feathers and base. The white turbine blade starts in home. Teams get points for delivering the white turbine blade to its blue holder, along with extra points if the chicken statue is upright with its base at least partly in the circle. The platooning trucks for Mission 13 are two identical truck builds. Verify that the red T-shaped beam structure on each truck can rotate freely into the underside of the truck. A three long tan frictionless connector enables this latching rotation. One platooning truck starts in home, and the other is placed on the mat near the center, with the truck facing eastward and lined up on its wheel markings. Teams can get points for latching the trucks together and or latching a truck to the bridge red latch connector. Teams may also use the platooning truck to earn points in the Mission 15 Load Cargo Mission. Mission 14's bridge involves teams getting points for lowering one or both bridge decks to rest on the center support. For your mission building checks, make sure that all the hinge connectors on the bridge are frictionless gray connectors, allowing the bridge decks to rotate smoothly. Also, verify the placement of the blue stud connector near the red latch on the west bridge. This blue stud connector may appear unimportant, but it keeps the latch from lowering too much when it is engaged by a platooning truck. All three parts of this mission model are dual locked near the center of the mat. The match starts with the bridge decks both raised straight up. Both missions 15 and 16 involve no new building of mission models. You are simply using the cargo containers that were built and described previously for our other mission models. We would like to emphasize these containers starting positions at the beginning of the match. One gray container will be preloaded in the cargo plane. One blue, one green, and one light orange container will be in the sorting center, and the blue hinged container starts placed in the Mission 2 position. Three gray containers start in home, making them easily accessible to the team. See the robot game rulebook for details and the limitations of end of match scoring with these containers. Mission 17's precision tokens have to do with rewarding teams who have few interruptions to the robot. There is no build necessary for these tokens. They are simply six red Lego discs placed in the southeast corner of the mat. Referees will remove one token for each interruption outside of home that your robot has in a robot game. One exciting change this year is that your team can have one robot interruption with no loss of points. Page 5 of the Robot Game Rulebook discusses how to correctly place your mat on your robot game board. The mat should be flush against the south and east sides of the board. This will leave a rather large gap on the west side of the mat for your home area and a very small gap on the north side of the mat. Expected measurements for these gaps are found in the rulebook. This season, our mat was able to flatten out fairly well. You can place heavy books on top of the mat to speed up the flattening process. If you are having trouble with the mat staying flat, it is optional to apply thin strips of black tape to only the west and east black borders of your mat. Be aware that competitions may choose to apply or not apply this tape as well, so be ready for the variation. If you have to put away your robot game board and mat between team meetings, make sure to carefully roll the mat. Bends and creases can affect your robot's navigation, so you want to do your best to avoid mat damage. 
Many of your mission models will be firmly but removably attached to your mat using the dual lock enclosed in your field shipment box. Page 6 of the Robot Game Rulebook discusses how to apply the dual lock itself, from pages 6 through 10 discussing the correct positioning for all of the mission models on the field. Verify positioning of each mission model before applying any necessary dual lock. The steps for dual lock are fairly easy, although you may need a tall adult to help in reaching some of the mat, depending on how your board is set up in your team meeting place. Only focus on applying dual lock to one mission model location at a time. After you have verified where a specific mission model goes on the mat, peel off one square sticker of dual lock for each X marked square of this area of the mat. Next, peel off second squares of dual lock and place these on top of each of the first squares, this second layer being sticky side up. Finally, take your mission model and carefully align its position with the black markings on the mat. Press down firmly on the mission model, allowing the second layer of dual lock to stick to it. You should hear a popping sound as each square of dual lock firmly snaps together in this process. In initially putting on the dual lock to your mat and mission models, as well as setting up your board before each team practice, be sure to carefully refer to pages 6 through 10 of the Robot Game Rulebook. Even if you are only working on a fraction of the mission models, we encourage you to use the correct field setup every time because seeing the other mission models in place may help your team generate an idea of how to accomplish them. Also, seeing the mission models in place will help you realize if your planned robot navigational path may be obstructed by another mission model along the way. As you go through the many months of your FLL season, your mission models will start to see a lot of use from practicing and possibly packing and unpacking between team meetings. Keep having periodic checks to make sure that your mission models are still built correctly, checking for any pieces that may have gone missing or may have been incorrectly placed after a well-intentioned repair effort. Also, as we have mentioned, there are several mission models that use friction connectors on hinge joints in order to provide resistance and rotation. If you use these mission models a lot, these connectors may wear out enough that they may need to be replaced. You want to be ready for potentially brand new connectors at your competitions. Finally, make sure you read your robot game rulebook throughout the season to remember the rules for scoring. But you also want to make sure you keep up to date with the challenge updates found online. We will point out this website link again in a little bit. First provides all registered teams two paper copies of the Robot Game Rulebook, and electronic versions are also available online. These rules, along with the challenge updates, are the ultimate authority regarding the rules of the Robot Game. These rules are so important that all team members should read the documents multiple times to be very familiar with them. These will answer all your questions from what to expect in a robot game match to what is legal at these matches and what scoring to expect for your hard work. FIRST also provides a printed engineering notebook and a team meeting guide, along with electronic versions of these documents through the Coach's FIRST dashboard. These can be great resources to some teams, especially rookie teams. However, unlike the robot game rulebook that is required for all teams to use in order to understand the competition rules, teams can choose their own meeting structure and develop their own ways of recording their team's progress. It is up to you and what will work best for your team. Make sure to check out the official FIRST documents, such as the Challenge Overview. Also make sure to check for updates for clarification of the Innovation Project or Robot Game Challenges. Try to check the challenge updates every week so you don't miss the frequent robot game clarifications or the occasional project ones. Remember, you can download an electronic version of the Engineering Design Notebook and Team Meeting Guide from First Inspire's account dashboard. Your team does need to be officially registered and the coach will have to log in to get the documents. Thank you for watching and best of luck to your teams this season. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us at themoatmakers.org slash contact.